fold, but never again Back on our grind, you know what it is Yeah, yeah, this is our year Knock this down once, we got up again Put in the work, so I know we gon' win This is for real, we never pretend We gotta win, 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 win. I had to stop being base Part of my teams had to chase me Fell up a fold, but never again They boxing me out, I never fit in Never will fold, never could bend Just wanna win, 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 win What's good, fam? Clark here from All Fall Kinetics. Thanks for dropping by the channel. I know it's been a minute, so uh, yeah, let's dive into it. So what I'll be covering in this blog is basically a simple six-step science-driven systematic approach I wish I employed when I first started training. Like if I could rewind the clock, go back in time, this is what I lay out for myself. I know it would save me a whole heap of time. It would save me a lot of trial and error, back and forth. Um, it would cut my learning curve and it would just get me the results I wanted a lot quicker, you know? Just a little quick backdrop for the newcomers about yours truly. Ruben Clark, artist by heart. I love creating has a YouTube channel. I'm a health and wellness advocate, huge fitness enthusiast. I'm also a uniform personnel. First person who gets that in the comment below gets a surprise and a shout out. And I think that covers the bulk of it. But FYI, just because I said it in the last vlog, I'll be doing a small little giveaway at the end of this vlog for those who stick around. Now, let's get into good stuff. Six simple steps. Step one, goal. What results are we trying to render? Am I trying to bulk up? Am I trying to build muscle, lose fat? Am I trying to build strength? Whatever it is, I think it's important to be super specific. And also come in terms with the fact that the results you want is equivalent to the effort you put forward. Now that we have a goal at hand, Everything we do in between is objectively going to be geared towards that specific endpoint. Now, step two, frequency. How often should you train? Studies I've found infer that a higher frequency is superior in terms of rendering both hypertrophy and strength gains. So, in my training protocol, I try to tackle each muscle group twice per week to optimize growth. Step three, we're halfway there, baby. For this section, I'll just do a quick voice overlay to simplify things and just break it down. So, step three. Training days. We already got through with step one and step two. Step one, our goal is step two, frequency. We know in order to optimize grout, we should try to tackle each muscle group at least two times per week. So now all we have to do is tie this down into our day-to-day -day pursuit or weekly schedule. Now, to me, the easiest, most convenient, beginner-friendly workout split that could easily be modified into both an intermediate and advanced training regimen by playing around with different variables would have to be an upper lower body split. It's something that's flexible in terms of your schedule, like you could easily incorporate into your day-to-day -day pursuit, your weekly work life schedule. And it's something that is simple enough to build a momentum and eventually drive to get your results you're after, whatever that may be. So let's get things dialed in and break it down even more. Upper lower body split will look something like this. Putting frequency into context two times per week, you'd have Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now it doesn't have to be these days, but for the sake of this vlog, let's just say these are the days that work best with our schedule. Monday would be upper body, Wednesday would be lower body, and then Friday would be upper body again. Then the following week, to add a little variety into your training regimen, all we do is invert these to compensate frequency in the lower body. Monday would be lower body, Wednesday would be upper body, and Friday would be lower body again. Three days a week, literally just three hours of commitment. Paving the way. Step four, volume. But before we dive into the step, just a quick little recap. Step one, our goal. Step two, frequency. Step three, training days. All these steps complement each other. I think it's important to keep that in mind. And it's all gonna come around full circle, I promise you, at the end. Now volume is basically the amount of work we put in throughout the week. It's something that we'll measure by number of sets we perform on a day-to-day -day basis or every training session. And this is vital because as you'll come to find out, volume is a great drive behind growth and the results we're after. So when we dig into the study by Brad J. Schoenfield and colleagues, 
combined with other studies. It's easy to see how it confers that the sweet spot for weekly volume lies in a range of 10 to 20 sets. So ideally that's what I try to shoot for. Now, whether or not more than 20 sets has some sort of regression in terms of progress you make is a highly debatable topic. What I'd say to that is, in terms of growth, when your body hits a plateau, there may be a need to introduce a little more stimuli, perhaps weekly volume, to bypass whatever plateau there may be. Of course, I think it goes without saying, you'd also have to put training intensity and your weekly frequency into context, as these are variables would also dictate to some respect the magnitude of recovery and rest needed in relation to the goal at hand. Which takes us to step five, baby, intensity. Like I said earlier, the results you want will be highly dependent on the effort you put forth. That being said, the way I gauge intensity is by primarily being focused or mindful of the effort I put forth in relation to the workload at hand. Because in the grand scheme of things, I know this is going to dictate the results I render. At its core, it basically comes down to demanding your body to push forward and come and serve your term after it has tried to convince you or trick you that it has no more to offer. I think it's important to do this in a systematic and objective way. So, the tool I found most useful in doing so is an RPE scale, which basically stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion. It's a 1 to 10 scale where 1 is minimal effort, meaning you could easily do 9 more repetition, and 10 is maximum effort, whereby you literally can't do another repetition, you don't have any more. And 7, you could do 3 more repetition, RPE 8, you could do 2 more, so on and so forth. Now let's take it home. Step six is where everything comes together. This is the most simplistic take I can render, so bear with me. I believe it's something a beginner could easily pick up, understand, modify, and implement. At the same time, it could also be modified into an advanced regimen, depending on your goal and training level. That being said, try to think of each variable we're about to go over as chess pieces you could move around and play with the best complement your current goal and lifestyle preference. So let's take it away. Upper body. In this session, we tackle five upper body muscles, which are chest, back, shoulder, triceps, and biceps. Now, in my opinion, I believe it's best to start off by building a good foundation with compound movements, then work our way or finish off with more of an isolation movement. So that's the setup I have here for each exercise or muscle group, which just comes down to two exercise per muscle. Now, here's a quick overview. In terms of daily volume, I just start off with six sets for each muscle. And since we're starting with a frequency of two upper body training session, if you need clarity on what I mean by this, you can reference step three, training days. This gives us a weekly volume of 12 sets for each muscle group, which automatically falls within the weekly volume sweet spot we mentioned earlier in step four. Having said that, we can move forward to the best part, the actual plan. Here we go. Quick reminder, the five muscles we're going to tackle in this session are gonna be divided into two exercise per muscle. The first is gonna be compound, the second is gonna be more of an isolation movement. So number one, chest. Compound movement, I choose incline barbell press. The goal is gonna be four sets of eight to 10 reps and an RPE of eight, so you'd have two reps in the tank. Second exercise is gonna be cable flies or dumbbell flies, shooting for two sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of nine to 10. You notice that the isolation exercise is gonna have a higher RPE goal or target. This should also be a more controlled, lighter weight, which will still generate a higher rate of perceived exertion at this point in training. Quick side note and a reminder, this is just a general overview, so don't limit yourself or feel like you have to do the exercise that I'm laying out here because there's a wide array of exercise you could choose from online. So just keep that in mind. On to the second exercise or muscle, our back. Compound movement I choose is a barbell row or some sort of row. And the target volume again is gonna be four sets of eight to 10 reps and an RPE of eight, which would leave you with two reps in the tank. The second exercise I do is a cable row. Two sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of nine to 10. And then I basically use the same layout or approach for my shoulders, triceps, and bicep guys. So basically the volume and RPE variables are gonna be constant. And the only thing would change would be the selection of exercise. Then the next day we'd rest and roll into our second training session, which by referencing step three, we know would be lower body. In this session, we tackle four muscle groups, which would be our quads, hamstrings, calves, and abs. 
Now, the first muscle for the session, quads. Again, breaking it up into two exercises. First being a compound, I choose barbell squats or maybe deadlifts, comes out to your choice. Shooting for four sets of eight to 10 reps and an RPE of eight. And then moving on to the second exercise in isolation movement, leg extensions, shooting for two sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of nine to 10. And I roll over to second exercise, second muscle, hammies. Exercise number one would be more of a compound. So I do barbell RDLs, shooting for four sets of eight to 10 reps and an RPE of eight, and then roll over to second exercise, more of an isolation movement, something like leg curls. And this would be, again, it would be two sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of nine to 10. And then the third exercise would be for our calves. So I'd start off with standing calf raises, shooting for four sets of eight to 10 reps and an RPE of eight, and then finish off with seated calf raises, shooting for two sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of nine to 10. And then the last muscle we throw in in this lower body session would be abs. And what I'd like to do is I'd start off with hanging leg raise, shooting for three sets of 12 to 15 reps and an RPE of eight to nine. And then the second exercise I do for abs would also be a three sets exercise. It would be something like cable crunches, shooting for three sets of 12 to 15 reps. Again, an RPE of eight to nine. Now again, this is just a general basic overview of how to get started in putting a solid training range regimen together. It's a systematic approach I wish I had laid out for me when I first started because it's both beginner friendly and not hard to implement at all. Now, for those who stuck around, like I promise, the giveaway. It's not crazy. I have a couple of free references, guide, and resource for you in the description below. And that pretty much wraps up this vlog. Hope it found you well. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up, leave comments below if you need any clarification, and I'll follow up this video with a more detailed overview of my current training regimen. So look out for the next video. Until next time, peace.